Halo Episode 5, titled Reckoning, was a very analytical and low-key episode as everyone revolved around extracting the second artifact from the newly discovered rock. But in the final few minutes, director Jonathan Liebsman and his crew went into a complete berserk mode to show off Master Chief's, Pablo Schreiber, skills. Alas, all that gunplay and punching and kicking was rendered pointless by a massive Covenant alien who straight up took the artifact and blasted it off into slip space. And they left a little twist at the end with Sir Ender Makey, Charlie Murphy, pretending to surrender to the UNSC. First Contact with Makey, directed by Jonathan Liebsman and written by Silke Louise and Stephen Kane, Halo Episode 6, which is titled Solace, opens on a very raw note as we see a traumatized Master Chief, alternating between flashbacks of his younger self and him looking at Halsey, Natasha McElhan. His hand starts shaking, and then the camera pulls back to reveal that Master Chief is sitting in an emergency room beside a screaming Kai, Kate Kennedy. Van Ack, Bentley Kalu, and Riz, Natasha Culls Ack, are trying to sedate her, while John holds one of Kai's hands down, but the pain is just too much for her to bear. As soon as she settles down, Kurtana, Jen Taylor, notifies John that his vitals are not good, and he needs to get himself checked. Captain Jacob Keyes, Danny Sapani, interrupts John and Kurtana's conversation to talk about the Covenant ship that escaped with the artifact and became untraceable. John laments about losing the artifact, but Keyes assures him that John saved many lives and that he's going to find it again, just like he did before. And this time, they have Makey, someone who they assume knows about the ins and outs of the Covenant. While an injured Miranda, Olive Gray, runs tests on an unconscious Makey, Jacob explains to John all that we already know about Makey's backstory. John seems like he's getting dizzy. So, Jacob asks if he has done a system check. John says that he's fine, a sentiment that Kurtana contradicts. After landing on Reach, Makey is taken away for further inspection. John spots Halsey in the hallway and follows her. As soon as she gets into one of the rooms, John locks her in and starts the countdown to the release of a gas that'll, well, liquefy Halsey. And he orders Cortana to make him undo it, while Halsey tries to get out, and then screams at John to stop this experiment. Cortana says she can't make John do anything. She can only shut down and turn on his neural pathways. John isn't convinced, and he keeps telling Cortana to make him open the door, or else Halsey is going to die. When the gas is about to hit Halsey, John pulls her out and says that he wasn't going to let her die. He only wanted to test Kurtana's limits. Now, that's not very clear yet because maybe Kurtana has subliminally manipulated John to open the door, instead of doing it in a noticeable manner. Keys, Margaret, Shabana Azmi, and other members of the UNSC discuss what should be done with Makey, John, and Halsey. As predicted, the UNSC asks for a scapegoat for the failure and faults that were noticed on Eridanus 2. Meanwhile, John confronts Makey, who tells him a lie that is very close to the truth, so that it doesn't exactly look like she's lying. John asks if Makey knows where the Covenant is, and Makey gives him some vague directions. Makey thinks John doesn't trust her, so, John gives her the lowdown about why he can't bring himself to trust her. Makey counters with the revelation that the Covenant calls her the Blessed One, which triggers his memory of hearing about the same on the rubble. Makey says she and John are the same, and John, a little overwhelmed, gets out of the Halsey's horrors, while Jacob strives to find the Covenant's base and John stares at the first artifact, Halsey undergoes a rigorous interview by a representative of the UNSC. Although it seems like a regular interview, holographic versions of Jacob and Margaret make it clear that they're merely preparing her to be the scapegoat for the UNSC. As Halsey runs out of ground to run away from her illegal scientific experiments, the interviewer starts talking about the Kurtana system, which involves the killing of an actual sentient person. But before the interviewer can question her any further, John barges in and takes on the position of the interviewer. Halsey gives her usual spiel about evolving human evolution itself and eventually comes to the meat and bones of her mission. Halsey believes that humans are hardwired to be involved in conflicts and be selfish. In a brief cutaway, we see that Miranda has stumbled into the meeting as well as a hologram. Halsey continues talking about the origins of the Spartan program and how she essentially wanted to create a species that wouldn't have the shortcomings of the human mind. 
John asks Halsey to skip to the part where Halsey decides to kidnap kids and put them into the Spartan program. Halsey admits that she needed kids no older than six years to carry out the necessary training and augmentation. She says that the kids were too young to volunteer and their parents didn't want to give them up very easily. Here's the kicker. Halsey kidnapped kids and replaced them with clones that would die after a short period of time, thereby giving the parents the impression that their child was gone. Everyone, from John to Miranda, is mortified. Halsey is unmoved and thinks she has done the right thing, and that since she did all that during wartime when no one asked too many questions, it's all water under the bridge. And since Halsey thinks they've come so far, they must finish what they started. John promises to do the same, but without Halsey. After exiting the meeting, John orders Miranda to check on the artifact while suffering from a panic attack. John talks to Kai because she is the only one who has a modicum of emotion on the reach. Margaret explains to Halsey that she has played into her game and made herself the scapegoat that the UNSC needs. So now she's going to be transferred to a lab away from the headquarters, and her position is going to be given to Miranda. Master Chief has a cosmic connection with Meiki. Miranda asks if Meiki can help her translate a Covenant audio clip that the UNSC intercepted. While agreeing to help Miranda, Meiki notices John having another panic attack strong enough to make him exit the room and envision Quan Ha, Yaren Ha. Jacob expresses suspicion about the location of the covenant that Meiki has given, while certain members of the UNSC look at how Margaret is handling the situation from afar. Halsey, who is under close surveillance, expects Kurtana to breach fleet command protocol and make contact and give her some inside information. Kai resumes her position amidst the Spartans and feels odd that no one asks how she's doing after healing from a fatal injury because they aren't programmed to do so. Miranda takes over Halsey's office but reaches a speed bump as she gets a message from Halsey to meet her. Under the pretext of bidding goodbye to Miranda for the final time, Halsey actually scans Miranda's face to get clearance to the stuff that she has been blocked out of by Margaret. I mean, there's diabolical and heartlessness, and then there's Halsey's personal brand of diabolical and heartlessness. While Adun, Ryan McParland, works on the scan, Miranda gets a ping from the tests that were running on Makey's blood. She finds out that certain parts of Makey and John's DNA are identical in nature, thereby making them two in a billion. John confronts Makey, and when he suffers another panic attack, Makey actually reveals her plan to band together to get the first artifact out of the reach, reunite it with its partner, and find peace. Kurtana gets to Halsey, but before she can do anything, John gets to the artifact in an attempt to access it and find the second piece. Makey gets an intuition that something is about to go wrong. Miranda monitors John's interaction with the artifact. And as soon as John touches it, the artifact lights up as usual, but this time it impacts Makey too, and the two of them have a seizure. Both of them reach the brink of death. However, as soon as it looks like they're about to die, their vitals stabilize. John and Makey momentarily share a vision where they're standing in an open field that has a majestic halo around it. Or maybe the virtual field is in the shape of a halo. It's really not very clear. What's clear, though, is that John and Makey are destined to be together in some shape or form. They just have to figure out how to do it in this real world.